When you have to find the zeros of a polynomial, especially if it's a higher degree polynomial, it becomes pretty tricky because we really don't know how to factor higher degree polynomials and you have to use sort of a guess and check method. One thing to do is to take <clears throat> the constant coefficient, which we call p, and the leading coefficient, which we call q, and do a list of factors of p over q. Those factors, all of them, are possible answers to the polynomial. So basically, if you make a list of the factors and then test them using synthetic, you become able to solve the polynomial. This is called using the rational zero test. So let's do an example here. Suppose I have this polynomial here. f of x equals 2x to the third plus 3x squared minus 8x plus 3. The p is 3 and the q is 2. So I have to do <coughs> p over q, all the factors. So I have to think about factors of 1, factors of 3, which are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, all over the factors of q, factors of 2, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. So that gives me all of the possible answers to this polynomial. So they are, if I make a list of them, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, 1 over 1, 3 over 1, <coughs> plus or minus 1 half, 1 over 2, plus or minus 3 halves, 3 over 2. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4 times 2. I have 8 possible answers for this polynomial. How do I find those 8 answers? I use synthetic to test and find <clears throat> one of the answers to the polynomial, like this. So, let's get another paper up here. And let's use synthetic with that polynomial. So, I want to try, let's try one. And remember, I list the coefficients across the top. If there's a missing coefficient, don't forget a 0, 3, negative 8, 3. And we're going to try the whole numbers first because they're easier. All right. Bring down the 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 and 3 is 5. 1 times 5 is 5. Negative 8 <coughs> and 5 is negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. I got a 0. That means 1 is a factor. So, I have one answer. That means that x minus 1 divides into this polynomial, and 1 is one of the answers. The rest of the polynomial, now I can rewrite. I depressed it by 1 degree. So, I have 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. Now, I wonder... Do you know how to solve that? And hopefully, you tell me that you can factor it. So let's try and factor it here. All right, we'll move it up a little bit so we can see what's going on. All right, so let's factor this. I know x minus 1 is one of my answers. And then this should factor into two parentheses, 2x and x. And now I need factors of minus 3. And I need a 3 and a 1. So let's try the 3. No, let's try the 3 here and the 1 here. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times x. So we want a minus here and a plus here because we want plus 5 in the middle. So 2x minus 1, x plus 3. So I've solved, the, I've solved this polynomial originally. I didn't know how to factor something like that. So how did I do it? I use the p over q method, p over q, which is constant term over a leading coefficient. And I came up with a list of factors, and then I just used synthetic trial and error. Usually go with the easier terms first, so I, if plus 1 didn't work, I would have tried minus 1, then plus 3, minus 3. 
Um, and you'll notice one of the threes would have worked also if, if I didn't, if I decided to try the threes first. So that's how to do it. Okay, let's try a harder polynomial this time. Notice the P is 12 and the Q is 10. So again, I have to do plus or minus P over plus or minus Q. So plus or minus 10 over 12. Now I need all the factors of 12. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 12, all over the factors of 10. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 10. So that's quite a list of factors. Once I get all those factors, I use synthetic to try and find the zero. And you might think, whoa, that's a lot of possibilities to try. Well, to narrow down the possibilities, type the equation into your graphing calculator. And what happens is you're going to see where the curve crosses the x-axis, and that will give you some clues as to what numbers to try. So with the graphing calculator, if you type in the equation, you can see where it might cross the graph, and that would be an answer. Now, on this graph, what I did was I changed the window. Instead of ha having a 10 by 10 grid, I have a 5 by 5 grid. So if things are too scrunched together, remember, you can change the dimensions of your window. So I did that, and it looks like 2 is a 0. So I look on my list here, and is 2 one of the factors? Oh, yeah, plus or minus 2 over plus or minus 1. So another thing I can do is I can look at the table. Remember, second table. And if you look at the table, find where there's a zero. And where there's a zero is where it crosses the axis. And you can see there right down at the bottom, at two I have a zero. So two definitely is one of the answers. So yay, that makes my work a little bit easier. I didn't have to try all of those possibilities. So I think two is an answer, so I'm going to use synthetic. So I put a two here. Across here I do minus 10, 15, 16 minus 12, how do I know if 2 is indeed a factor? What do I get here? I better get a 0, so I get my 0 ready, just as a reminder. Okay, so bring down the negative 10. 2 times negative 10, negative 20, plus 15, negative 5. 2 times negative 5, negative 10, plus 16, 6. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 and negative 12, I do get 0. So 2 is a factor. That means x minus 2 divides into that polynomial. And when I divide it, I get for my answer negative 10x squared minus 5x plus 6. How do I get the rest of the answers? I factor this. So, two parentheses here. What are possible factors of this polynomial? After multiple tries, I realize this isn't going to factor, so what do I do to get the rest of the zeros? Quadratic formula. So, Plug those numbers into the quadratic formula. Remember, before you use quadratic, I like you to list what you're using for a, b, and c. So a is negative 10, b is negative 5, and c is 6. And remember, with the quadratic formula, you're probably going to get two answers. So work it out and see what you get. Another clue that um, quadratic formula is going to need to be used is when you do look at the graph, you can't really see the other spots that it crosses. They, they don't end up right on nice numbers. So that's a clue that you need quadratic formula. Well, that's it. Good luck with